Okay, hi there. Welcome to a short micro and macro revision session. Uh, we're going to be looking at the significance of economies of scale for the changing structure of markets and also the economic and social welfare effects from the production of goods and services that harness economies of scale. Essentially thinking about how you can use this important concept, this key topic, as part of your economics revision. Economies of scale relate to the long run production function. So let's briefly revise the difference in theory between the short run and the long run. In the short run, at least one factor input is held fixed. We hold it constant. That's normally the amount of capital equipment, for example. It can also be the amount of land available for production. And in the short run, businesses are limited. They're constrained with both fixed and variable factors. Uh, in the long run, uh, all factors of production are variable and hence the scale and in theory the capacity of production can change allowing a business or businesses in the market to benefit from economies of scale. Now this distinction between short run and long run is theoretical um, you know for example in modern manufacturing and digital services for example this distinction is, is pretty much meaningless. But what is clear is that the extent to which businesses can harness, can benefit from economies of scale, is important in many fast-changing markets and industries. Giant global retailers now, such as Amazon, can benefit from a wide range of economies of scale. And economies of scale are important in lots of different industries, from uh, vaccinations through to the to my particular favourite, the global beer industry. So scale economies, internal scale economies from the growth of a business are clearly a significant, really important economic concept to be aware of. So what are economies of scale? Well, basically internal scale economies, the focus of this video, they are the unit cost advantages from a business expanding the scale of its production in the long run. And basically they come from what's called increasing returns to scale. In other words, you might double your inputs of land, labour and capital, but maybe get a trebling of output. That will be an increase in return to scale. And often very, very big scale manufacturing, volume manufacturing often uses fewer inputs per unit of output. Hence, the average cost comes down. Now, as the unit cost of production falls with economies of scale, uh, that gives uh, leads to an improvement in productive efficiency and obviously can give a business a competitive advantage against rivals in domestic and external markets. And we can show, and we'll do in a minute, how economies of scale can lead to falling prices for consumers and higher profits for shareholders, which is obviously good news for people who own shares in businesses. So one, one way of thinking about the long run average cost curve, pardon me, is to think about the long run average cost curve shown here. Uh, if we go from output from Q1 to Q2, then there are some internal scale economies as long run average cost goes down. If we keep going to Q3, we're getting closer to the minimum point of the average cost curve in the long term, and that is the output of productive efficiency. However, beyond that point, there could be the risk of diseconomies of scale, and that's when the average cost curve in the long run starts to starts to rise. So this curve basically traces and tracks what happens to unit cost of production, average cost, as the scale of production changes. There are many different internal scale economies and do check over your existing notes to make sure that you have some a couple of good applied examples perhaps of each of these. So we talk about technical economies where businesses might be using super large amounts of capital equipment. Think about massive printing processes. Think about huge oil tankers. Think about enormous factories uh, producing on an industrial scale and benefiting from technical economies of scale. Mass production, very high productivity units of capital. And the uh, one of them is the law of increased dimensions, such as in container shipping, for example. Big businesses are able to exploit marketing economies where, for, for example, they might uh, be able to spread a significant marketing advertising spend across a, across a huge range of products and volume of output. So the advertising cost per unit is really actually quite small. If you think about businesses like Coca-Cola and Pepsi and Tesco, 
multi-million pound advertising budgets, but they sell millions of units every day. Big businesses are also able to achieve purchasing economies of scale where they can buy their inputs at lower prices because they have buying power in the market. We call that monopsony power. And larger firms are also often, not always, but often regarded as more credit worthy by commercial banks and by the capital markets. They may well be able to borrow money to fund expansion through loans and issue of their own debt at a lower rate of interest. That will be a financial economy of scale. We also have managerial economies of scale, which is where bigger businesses are better able to, to divide the labour force up, employing specialist managers and things, and purchasers to supervise production systems. So there are lots of potential big economies of scale, and a linked and important related concept is called the Minimum Efficient Scale, or MES, Minimum Efficient Scale, and it's shown in this diagram. The minimum efficient scale is defined as the lowest point on a, on a firm's long run average cost. It's the lowest feasible unit cost of production. And that's really quite important. It's uh, uh, the shape of the cost curve tells us how big the output has to be before the minimum efficient scale is reached. So it's basically a scale of production where all internal scale economies have been fully exploited. It's the lowest point on the average cost curve for the firm. Now, if that MES is reached pretty quickly, if the MES is low relative to the size of the market, then typically there'll be many firms in the industry that are able to reach that point. So we tend to get a highly fragmented, highly competitive, uh, low, low concentrated market. On the other hand, point four tells us that if the minimum efficient scale is high, in other words, there are big scale economies to be exploited relative to the size of the market, we may well actually have a natural monopoly where only one firm is fully able to exploit the scale economies. And typically that leads to a highly concentrated market. Equally, the, the, the MES may not be particularly hard to see, especially in businesses where the long and average cost remains the same or where there are constant returns to scale for most firms. So in terms of the impact of scale economies uh, in your exams, in your assessments, think about how you can use the concept of economies of scale and then build diagrammatically some of the consequences for output, for price, for profit, and also for economic welfare, for the welfare of both producers and consumers. Uh, typically, scale economies lead to higher outputs, lower prices, increased profits, and increased consumer and producer surplus. Here's one way of showing it using a, a good level diagram, analysis diagram. So here is an initial set of cost curves and revenue curves, uh, MC1, AC1 and AR and MR. The first profit maximizing output is Q1 <clears throat> where marginal cost meets marginal revenue. And you can see here the price charge is P1. The average cost is C1 in the green area shows profit. Now, if there are some big scale economies, then you can move on to a much lower set of cost curves. So MC2, AC2 reflects increasing returns to scale, uh, economies of scale, of large scale production. For a given level of demand, the profit maximizing output rises to Q2. Uh, the price can come down to P2 and the cost per unit falls to C2, as you'd expect with scale economies. And the consequence for the firm is that the maximum profit there at Q2 is much, much bigger than, uh, than before. The yellow area substantially bigger than the green area. Keep in mind also on this diagram, you might want to just uh, think about this for a second or two. How might you show consumer welfare here? Uh, the fall in price and a higher output does lead to an increase in consumer surplus for the final consumers of the product. So economies of scale is one of those topics which is really quite important in the wider scheme of things. It's one of those topics that you really do have to revise quite carefully for your assessments. I just was thinking aloud in class the other day, well, where might we use scale economies? Where might we bring it into our discussion? And I thought of you know lots of examples, but then I shortened it down to six. You see, you can use scale economies both in micro and macroeconomic answers. So here's some examples. Uh, economies of scale helps to bring down the unit cost of healthcare. If we think about the moment, the vaccine rollout, 
speaking today on, on a day when over 800,000 people in the UK have been vaccinated. I was reading an article about syringe production in India, a factory or factories able to use 6 million syringes a day, but that's not enough to meet global demand. But scale economies can bring down the unit cost of healthcare and can give uh, government spending, for example, better value for money. Scale economies helps bring down the prices of the things we use regularly, from our TV screens to our kettles uh, to our smartwatches and things. So it helps to bring down the, the prices for consumer durables. A concept I've listed there is called the real product wage, which is essentially what can you buy with £100, £1,000, etc. So as, as commas, commas of scale bring down the price, as the price comes down, you can buy more with a given amount of money. On the other hand, of course, monopoly power can be exacerbated by uh, comms of scale. The digital monopolies that you guys may be very familiar with are, are able to scale, can scale very quickly and can often dominate their industry within a matter of years. So scale economy is a way of uh, creating and sustaining monopoly power. We're doing a lot of work on development economics at the moment in, in my economics classes. And one of the points we've been making is that you know, for countries to increase their per capita incomes, they really do need to move into commercial farming at scale to increase farm yields, food, food yields, export potential, very important for extreme poverty reduction to move, uh, not necessarily the, the whole way, but to move from smallholder to large scale or larger scale commercial farming. I would definitely be using economies of scale when I was talking about international trade. If you want to build and establish a comparative advantage, that economies of scale are important. So linking here, can you see that micro and macro point? And also, if you think about energy and environmental economics, you know, the whole idea of how we can shift purposefully and uh, quickly to clean energy, low carbon technologies. Again, the economies of scale of renewable energy are really important to bring down the long run unit cost. So industrial scale farming uh, is, is on, obviously, this is, I think this is an example from, could well be Brazil, uh, it's always been production. Industrial scale farming can lower prices, but of course, it's not always sustainable. So sometimes there's a trade-off between efficiency and uh, long-term sustainability. Digital monopolies can scale really quickly. You can make an argument that Uber and Netflix and others work against consumer welfare because smaller firms get squeezed out. We get the benefits of economies of scale, uh, but these, these businesses have substantial monopoly power. Morocco is a great example. I love this, uh, this example of Morocco fast-growing North African country. They have the world's, now the world's largest solar power plant. Wow. Uh, it covers like, something, like, something like the size of over 3,000 football pitches. It is absolutely enormous. It can be seen from space and it generates an absolute shed load of fairly cheap now renewable electricity. It's going to power you know, well over 2 million homes, numerous cities, and of course Morocco because of scale economies, and now start to think about exporting their surplus energy to other countries. And again, another example from Morocco here is this new port. It comes of scale and logistics can bring down the cost of, of uh, getting goods and services to market and increase the gains from globalisation and trade. And this, this last example I think is a, a brilliant example of why scale economies are really important. Clearly, the world is trying to scale up the manufacture of vaccines to help bring this global pandemic to an end at some point and return our lives to normal. But of course, you need syringes, you need vials, you need lots and lots of other products for the vaccination programme to be effective. The biggest manufacturer of syringes is in India. It's a Delhi-based family-owned corporation, the Hindustan Syringes and Medical Devices Limited, featured recently on BBC News. I'll post a link to a video on the website. It's one of the world's biggest makers of syringes and it's trying to ramp up production from about 4 million a day to 6 million syringes a day. Um, you know, taking on extra staff, but, but the, the, the challenge, the scale of production needs to go up to help India battle the COVID-19 crisis. It's a brilliant example uh, and one well worth looking at. So it comes of scale, there's a theory side to it Make sure you know, you know your diagrams. Make sure you can show the impact of economies of scale. 
But most importantly, I think for your assessments, be able to apply the concepts, be able to apply the ideas and then build that into evaluation of a range of micro and uh, macro topics. OK, I hope you found this video useful. We're producing lots of videos during the 2021 uh, assessment uh, period, lots of revision blasts and things. And um, we'll see you again next time.